Hi everyone! I'm Scientist Kelly here in Seattle, Washington. You have been so fortunate to have Scientist Rachel and Scientist Renee with you through this entire science unit for fourth grade known as Waves, Energy, and Information. It's my pleasure that I get to wrap up chapter four with you where you are going to be applying what you already know about the ways in which dolphins communicate and how that can connect to us as humans. Think back to though what you've learned already and what I've learned already from watching scientist Renee and scientist Rachel. How do dolphins use patterns to communicate? Can you think back? I know it was just, you know, a few chapters ago, maybe even a few days ago for you. What did you learn? How do they use them? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I know you're saying it in your head right now or you're yelling at your screen right now because dolphins communicate with signature whistles. Do you agree? Thumbs up if you do. Okay, and you're probably still yelling at me about how they also have patterns that uh, change in pitch to create their distinctiveness, right? Okay, let's keep going. They're not the only animals that rely on patterns to communicate. What other animals rely on patterns to communicate? Can you think about that for a minute? I think about it here in Seattle, Washington and what I know. And I often think about that bird that's sitting on the fence. The bird that I spy on secretly, that I can hear its pattern, I can hear its pitch. I wonder what it's saying. What animals have you thought about? Okay. Your question here in chapter four is, how can humans, that's us, use patterns to communicate? Hmm. Do you think we do? Do you think we have one pattern? Do you think we have multiple patterns? What do you think? <laughs> Let's think about how humans can use images to communicate. Where might you see this image here? What message do you think it's trying to send to you? Hmm. <laughs> I think we all recognize this one. What's the message it's trying to send? Is it saying that it's happy? Is it saying that it's sad? Yeah, I think we all know it's happy. Where might you see this one? What message do you think it's trying to send? <laughs> yeah, I hear some of you. You're being funny and you're saying, go faster. But we all know that the message, this bright red sign is sending to us is to stop. You may have seen it while driving with your parents. You may have seen it walking down the street. Where might you see this one though? This is the one I kind of think, hmm, I wonder how many of you have seen this sign. What message do you think it's trying to send? Let's think about it. If you've never seen it, what do you know about it already? What's the message? There's a fork, there's a knife. Hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's trying to tell me that this is a place where I could eat, or you could eat, or your whole group could eat. It's a place where we could go and find food. We know that just based on a fork and a knife. Today, I'm going to create a message in the form of an, in of an image, pardon me, and I'm going to send it to you. You may find this to be more challenging than you expect. You might find it easy, but I do want you to think about how it's being communicated while we do it. If you have your science notebook, your packet from the district, you're going to use the grid on page 81. If you do not have your notebook or your packet from the district, do not worry. I just need you to grab a piece of paper and a pencil. We're going to create our own grid to start. This is my grid <laughs> that I quickly drew out and I'm going to show you how to draw one out because it's, it's important that you have seven columns, okay, in seven rows. That'll help in our communication from one to the other. Let me pull up the paint pad. Okay, so here I have my box already created. I have two vertical lines right in the middle. Now, when I think about the size of this box, 
I think about maybe the size of a post-it. It could be a scrap piece of paper. It could be anything that you have available. So you're going to draw a box with two uh, vertical lines going down in the center. From there, you're going to draw two more lines to the right. And mine are a little squiggly, sorry, doesn't, it's okay. And two more lines to the left. That gives us seven vertical columns. And now we're going to draw the columns horizontally. And I'm going to start in the middle again. I'm going to draw two more on the top and two on the bottom. Okay, so we have a seven by seven grid and this will be helpful because that's what I'll be working off of to help try to communicate to you what image I want to convey. Okay, here we go. So if this is the grid that's sitting in front of you, I first want you to color in the second square from the right on the top. The second square from the right from the top. I need you now to color in the second square from the left on the top. On the second row, the second row, I want you to color in the first three left and the first three right. On the second row, the first three left, the first three on the right. On the third row, I want you to color it in all the way. You're going to color in all those. On the fourth row, you need to color in the middle five. The middle five. On the fifth row, color in the middle three. On the fifth row, color in the middle three. On the sixth row, color in the one middle grid, the one middle square. You got it? Give you just another minute. Okay, let's see. Does your grid look like this? Do you have a heart? Do you have a heart? Wait, what? Some of you do? Okay, very cool. Are some of your hearts a little skewed? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so how did I send my message? How did I do it? If I was the sender here, if I'm the sender and you were the listener, what was so challenging about it? Were you able to see what I was trying to communicate when I showed you the image? Yeah, <laughs> it was hard. What does it mean from the center? What does it mean from the left? Yeah, that's right. How would this activity be more difficult if your partner were sitting across the room? I mean, here we are. You could be anywhere in the US, anywhere in the world right now, and I tried to communicate this image to you. But imagine being in the classroom. What would happen if you were with a partner and you were talking across the room? What if you were in different rooms? What if one of you were in the library and one of you were in your classroom? Okay, I want you to be thinking about these things as we move through chapter four in this unit. I challenge you, I challenge you to use a post-it, to use a scrap piece of paper, set up the grid. You might have to set it up twice, one for you and one for your mate. Set up the grid, 
try it. Try sitting across the room and try to do, to describe your image. Try to communicate it across. See if you're successful. Play around with it. Have fun. Okay, I'll see you in the next segment where we'll read a book and have a little more fun with some communication. Thank you.